bail out true identity yeah. because that's what, why you got saved. Yeah. You got saved for you can begin to identify the, the true you. Yeah. Amen. When you were in darkness, when you were separated from God, that was not you. Amen. That was a lying vanity. That was an illusion. Because wow. it was shaping in iniquity. It was yes. in darkness. Mm -hmm. But when you came into the true light, you started seeing some things about yourself. Not only the good, I mean the bad and the ugly, but you found some good stuff yes. too. Yes. There's some things that I do now that I've never done in my first birth. Mm -hmm. right. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Also, like you just mentioned, the unveiling of the truth. You know, it, it's the truth of God. You know, we confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, which gives us that ability to, you know, to, to, you know, uncover. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when the word comes and when we stay in the truth of God, how it just uncovers and unveils. And then through that unveiling of Christ, we get what? We get good things. Yeah. We get our true identity. We get who we really are. We get peace. We get love. We get joy. Yeah. We get all these things that comes come through the unveiling come of Christ. Come on. Yeah. You know, and the truth of his word residing on the inside of us. So it's a twofold thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you put on Christ, you get good things behind it. Yeah. You know, so that's the blessing of it, the covenant. That, that's the blessing of it, you know. And we said one thing about this unveiling and this Revealing because that's what the apocalypse is. Yes. We did the teaching. I still love it, and mm -hmm. I, it's been month, uh, years. Yeah. Remember the word earnest expectation? Yeah, that was good. Apocardogia. Oh, yeah. Wow, I yes, just love that yes, word. Yes. <laughs> it's a teaching on earnest expectation. Uh -huh. that time ago. I like that. And it's really, the, it talks about it in Romans eight. And those that are watching us on Romans eight, it talks about there's an earnest expectation yeah. of the sons of God, yeah. mm -hmm. and there's a there's a revealing and an unveiling. Of the sons of God. Yes. And the apocalypse that everybody waiting on. Anybody ever heard that word apocalypse? Uh -huh. You ever seen it on Hollywood? Yeah. You ever yeah. see how they portray it? Yeah. That's a lie. Tell your neighbor that's a lie. Yeah. <laughs> because it's biblical. And, and according to the biblical definition, uh -huh. the uh, apocalypse is not bad. It's not doom and gloom. Right. Yeah. Come on. It's yeah. not destruction. Right. It means to disclose. It means to unveil. Yeah. The book of Revelation is an apocalypse. Yes. It's a revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. Everything from chapter 1 to 22 is Christ being unveiled yes. in this Amen. people. Amen. It's not spooky. Yes. Only humans make it spooky. Right. So they use the word apocalypse and they can't use their brains and they won't go to the Greek to find out the real reason what a word means. Yep. I'm looking forward to the apocalypse. Yeah. In yeah. fact, yes. it's not a calendar event. Yeah. It's a Kairos moment. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. it's not something that happens mm -hmm. uh, that's reserved for this great fight that's going to transpire in the wow. Middle That's not the apocalypse. Mm -hmm. The yeah. apocalypse, if you can hear us this morning and you hear it on the right frequency, yeah. that's an apocalypse. Mm -hmm. yes. The apocalypse is Amen. something you've never done before right. becomes the main thrive or the main goal in you. Yes. You know, you used to then come on Wednesdays. Now you come on Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. Well, come on. <laughs> yeah, that's an apocalypse, you know, taking place. And you don't even know it. You don't even know it. You've been body snatched, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and made it. You really then, made it. Then you have an apocalypse when you say you want to be a greeter or usher. Yeah. Well, you've been in the church long enough and you found out, you, you understand the core values and the culture of the house, and you say, if God was really dealing with me about serving the house, Amen. doing something. That's an apocalypse. Yeah. Mm. All of a sudden, he pulled a veil. You never had a desire before. All of a sudden, it comes up mm. on the inside and you say, I want to do something for the church. Yes. Yeah. So it's high moments. You know, you just get those epiphany moments, you know, where you just sit minding your business. It's like some explosions begin to take place on the inside and you just like don't know what to do with yourself half the time. You know, you're just sitting there minding your business. Then you have a song and you have yeah. some joy and just like, wow, like a burst of energy, like, you know, more burst of energy than a starburst, <laughs> you know? And it's just like light living, you know, lively, and it's exciting, yeah. and it's explosive. Yeah. And you feel like, wow, where does this come from? It's on the inside. Yeah. And that's what I love about the Lord. That's what I love about the benefits and everything that he gives to us and that's residing on the inside. I love that because at any moment in a down moment, at a scourge moment or, or a depressed time or a pressed time or whatever you may be going through, you have it on the inside of you. You can just regard yourself. You can just be guarded up by the loin of your mind and rest, rest your hope in the, in the revelation that is brought to you at Jesus Christ. And it's right there at the unveiling of your mind, right there on the inside, deposited on the inside. We have everything pertaining to life, life and godliness. That's the word of God. And you know what? It's not just in the book. It's true. It's on the inside of you. When it says that you read that we have everything pertaining to the life of godliness, it is so 
true. But I like that word when you you just mentioned apocaridokio. I love that. So of course I had to put that in my Bible. Yeah. And to watch with the head outstretched to direct attention to God, to get one's thinking changed. And the word apple alone is out from any kind of separation of one thing or another from which the un, which the union of fellowship of two is destroyed. Wow. Mm -hmm. Come on, so you have to direct your attention. See, when you got saved, you 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 direct your attention, your focus. You have your eye is single in one direction. There's no distractions or nothing else to come and just take away from what you know what what you what you have your attention on now. And so, so many times, you know, as people of God, it's so little things just come and steal, kill, and take from us and rob from us. We allow such small little minute things in our lives, little tiny things that don't have nothing to do with nothing. Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 So I, you know, I like exciting. that. Mm -hmm. Something that comes to destroy the fellowship of two. Yes. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. That, that, yeah. I mean, that's just like somebody coming in between your marriage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, that's like somebody coming and just, you know, you're going to stand by and just let them break up your marriage. Mm -hmm. I mean, a natural, are you really going to stand by and let somebody just come in and just break up your marriage and get in your marriage bed? Mm -hmm. So the situation is, is our fellowship with the Lord. Things come in to disrupt that fellowship that we have with the Lord, that level of intimacy. Something else that I said was our true existence inside God's kingdom is breaking apart every falsehood that fits yes. right what you're talking about. Uniting wow. us fully with the great love of God. Because that's what we need. That's the revelation we need. We need that unveiling. Our, our true identity is going to be secure when we find our relationship with the Lord. That's true. The deeper, the, the wider, the more uh, uh, sufficient that your, your your walk with the Lord is, the more intense. Mm -hmm. That's when intimacy comes in. Yep. I, I, I bet some of us haven't woke up with a desire to study, read, fellowship, hmm. worship. Have you ever been awakened? In the middle of the night, then you know you just sleep just leaves you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Amen. You ever been in those? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, ever, you ever just like, and, and it's not pizza, it's not what you ate, right. it's not you had a bad day. Right. God knows you got to be at work at six. Mm -hmm. Sometimes He's looking for a sacrifice. Yeah. Come on. And sometimes he, He'll give you something that Red Bull can't give you. Yeah. Right. Yes. Come on. And, Come on. and sometimes, sometimes our sleep, our sleep, become an idol. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Because you know, we, we, we haven't learned to trust God in that area. Mm -hmm. I, I believe when God really does a thing with you and He starts doing some things and bringing you to that unveiling and disclosure, yes. your normal habits are disturbed. Yes. Come on. Yes. yes. And this is something about us, because I'm looking at some of y'all, some of y'all just too normal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm really, I'm serious. Some of y'all just too normal. Y'all got this environment. You like a walking greenhouse. <laughs> everything is monitored. Everything is measured. God wants, God, God, see, that's religion. Yeah. God is spontaneous. Yeah, yeah. He just acts. You know what I'm saying? He, like Paul said, he explodes sometimes. Yeah, yeah. We can't, sometimes you can't. You want him at three, he come at 305. Oh, yeah. Seriously. We, that's just the way we are. We're wired that way. And we, yeah. I, I want to be a church boo that just, when we come in, things just blow up. Yes. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yes. I, I, mean, I was at Royal Faith Center. 